You're watching Fox 10 News at 5.30 in high-definition television. Good morning, and thanks for choosing Fox 10 News on this Thursday morning. Today is November the 6th. I'm Sarah Wall. And I'm Eric Reynolds. Good Thursday morning, everyone. Well, let's check in first now with meteorologist Michael White for a look at today's weather forecast and a lot warmer than expected this time of the year. Yeah, when's November coming back, Michael White? Believe it or not, guys, it's coming back tonight. This Thanks, Michael. Our time now, 531. In the news this morning, a mobile toddler is recovering this morning after his mother says he was attacked by a neighbor's dog. And we want to warn you that some of the video that you're about to see may be disturbing. Two-year-old Caden and his mom were playing outside their Eslava Lane home when she says that he suddenly was snatched up by the neighbor's dog. The boy's mother says that she tried to fight the dog off, but he would not let go. Now, fortunately, the dog's owner saw what happened and stepped in. So he shook him in his while he was still holding on to his neck with his teeth, and then he dropped his head down. That's when the neighbor daughter was able to take her feet and apply it to the dog neck and get, to let him release my baby. The dog's owner took the toddler and his mother to the emergency room. The child is recovering at home after receiving some 45 stitches. Now we were told that the dog was handed over to the City of Mobile Animal Shelter and euthanized. Police say that no charges were filed. Well, according to the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, half of all kids will be bitten by a dog before they turn 12. And about 800,000 people go to the doctor because of dog bites each year. Now, here are some things to keep in mind when meeting a strange dog. Allow the dog to sniff you before you pet him and always pet under the chin. Patting a dog on the top of the head could be seen as a sign of aggression. Also, never allow a child to put their face near a dog's face. Never lunge at a dog or back the dog into a corner. And look for signs that the dog is uncomfortable. That may include a tense body, an erect or slowly wagging tail, or yawning and even licking their lips. Following his re-election, Alabama Governor Robert Bentley is focusing on improving the state's financial situation. In an interview that you saw right here on Fox 10 News, the governor talked about the need to replenish the general fund. He later held a news conference on the steps of the state capitol in Montgomery. The governor was asked if he would consider a lottery. It is an option. Uh, we will look at it. We're going to look at everything. Uh, but if we did something like a lottery, you have to look at how much you really benefit from it. Uh, now, do I think that gambling is the best way to fund government? No, I really don't. Uh, I think jobs are the best way to fund government. The legislature is expected to convene for its 2015 regular session in the spring. If you're just joining us, we want to bring you up to speed on some of the other stories making headlines this morning. A Sims man is behind bars accused of having sex with two teenagers. Daphne police say that 23-year-old Ryan Joseph Gray, who you see here, used Facebook to contact two young teenage girls. They say that he offered the girls marijuana and had sex with them. Gray is in the Baldwin County Jail under a $225,000 bond. And a nursing student who was seen on surveillance video being abducted in Philadelphia is safe and sound this morning. Authorities say that 22-year-old Carlicia Freeland Gaither was found outside Baltimore, Maryland yesterday. The man who police say took her, 37-year-old Delvin Barnes, was arrested. Meteorologist Michael White is standing by this morning in the Fox 10 News Storm Tracker Center with an update on our Thursday forecast. I've always loved being around kids. Trying to persuade, guide, redirect, whatever I can do, you know, just, just to show them the direction they need to go in. Ronnie Rowell is Alabama's Principal of the Year. Now in his 10th year at Theodore High School, Rowell believes a family tradition drew him to education. My father, grandfather, uncles played a lot of sports. Bama Rowell played with the Braves, Boston Braves years ago was my great uncle. And uh, so the whole family has always been sports minded. Love of sports kind of led me to education. I really wanted to coach and I was actually a PE instructor when I started out and, and a coach. Coached three sports for like seven years. Mobile County High School in Grand Bay was his first stop. Raul was hired there in 1984. I took a science job, so I started teaching science. I started teaching biology. Went to Mary Montgomery and became science department chair. 
Mr. Romano enabled me to become like an assistant principal. The position showed him there were similarities to his early years in education. Back in the day when I was coaching, I was all, all about the players, helping them, you know, discussing whatever we need to talk about if they had some issues on or off the field. Uh, very similar to what I do now. Uh, as a principal. We don't have a game uniform on, but we still talk about issues in and out of the classroom. Raul's assistant's job at MGM led to an appointment as principal at Theodore in 2005. In this job, you're always learning. As a principal, you have to learn to do an accurate needs assessment. you got to look at your entire student body. I've got some students over here that are struggling. I've got some students over here that are thriving. Looking at the student body as a whole and then breaking it down individually. He's considered an innovator. We put in so many different programs like the anger management, test retake, freshman academy. The students being successful, especially in that ninth grade year, which is why we have freshman academy, when we can get a student to become a junior, they figured it out by now. They see the writing on the wall and they strive to be who they need to be. Ideally, individualized instruction for every student in your school would be, you know, that's a perfect world. But when you got 1,700 students, you gotta come up with some programs that work if you keep striving to do that. The graduation rate, the success rate, those things will come with it. We've been able to move the graduation rate upward year after year after year. A major challenge for educators today may be society's constant change. Well, society's always changing. Education needs to be changing too. Students are different. With technology the way it is today, social media, they learn differently. And uh, we're trying some different things in the classroom, like small group learning. And different doesn't necessarily mean bad all the time, you know. There's some good differences in our students today. 31 years into his work with the Mobile County system, Raul credits his mentors and staff for his success. Getting the state principal of the year for high school kind of blew me away, no doubt. That's big. And then I was informed from Washington that I got in the final six. I'm humbled and I'm honored and uh, I'm proud. I've just been blessed. I'm happy where I'm at right now. I'm never opposed to a promotion, but I'm very content with what I do right now because I, I really do feel like with the support of the great people I have around me, you know, we make a difference. In Theodore, Eric Reynolds, Fox 10 News.